Oh, there we go. Yay! I forgot. <laughs> I started talking and then I forgot to unmute myself. This is the story of my life as a caster. I just can't avoid not unmuting myself. Maybe that's a good thing, but I'll leave that up to you to judge. But welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back into a Champion Select for second game of the evening in a best of three series between the B Division finals. And again, Google Amber is up by one over their opponents, Intel. Google Amber competing for Charity Water. Intel swapping onto the blue side will be competing for United Way. <clears throat> United Way of the Columbia Willamette going for more of a local charity. Now, uh, we do have adjusted bands from last game, which is uh, pretty telling <laughs> of uh, kind of what Intel really doesn't want to face against. They're eliminating the Braum pickup, but by Yarius earlier and Ravenite's Jax that will open up uh, Rengar and Evelyn. Kha'Zix getting banned out again against Frozen Fire, considering that he played that through the semifinals, not really expecting that uh, <laughs> to be a left out of the ban pool anyway, so a lot of high priority targets on Intel and not enough bullets in their gun to really take out any of the players here on Google. Really deep champion pools and really flexible selections. Now on the up opposite side of the table, we're going to have co three completely different champions banned out for Google Amber. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, but you know, if you have Jackson Braum removed, how are you going to respond? You're not going to let the enemy team take their bread and butter pantheon in the jungle. Soraka and Vi also getting banned out, so they don't want to have to deal with Vi one more time. That hit, <laughs> hit R to uh, kill the enemy kind of a thing, and Soraka. I don't know about you guys, but a top lane Soraka has always been just a bane of any dueling existence. Uh, if you also run her with a summoner heal, she's got three heals in her pocket and is able to really out-sustain anything that you have to throw at her or her team. Kataneka will be securing Ziggs this time, so uh, that's not going to be Kelvin, so we'll running that one going over to Achilles Yarius picking up Zyra, and of course, al allowing Google Amber, uh, they're allowing themselves to pick up Rise. They banned it out in game one and are taking it in game two, but clearly it's not a high priority here for Intel, so Frozen Fire will be picking up that Rise. Could end up being in the top lane, and uh, you know what happens? It's the exact same thing. He, he needs a little bit of ramp up time. Rise gets to overload, and then of course his ultimate, and he just starts nuking people down, building up that tier of the goddess, and really that deeper mana pool, higher AP ratios, or higher AP available to him from his passive. That's going to be a very frightening rise, given the late game. Tomato Orange looking for uh, an Elise one more time on Frozen Fire's behalf. we got five seconds left, Calvin's pull. A lot of options left to him. Now, if Cal oh, we'll be running... Oriana, bit of a cheeky selection there. Might as well see if he can flip the tables on the enemy and say, well, you played Oriana last time, I'll show you how to play her a little bit better. Um, maybe. Or Kantaneko will be trading over that uh, Ziggs to Achilles, and maybe, maybe we'll be seeing a flip side that Achilles wanted Ziggs as well, just a uh, Ziggs rules the world. But a super ALA looking for a Kale in that top lane up against Ryze. I do like this choice. Uh, at the end of the day, her auto attacks, and she's not going to be incredibly cooldown reliant, but the auto attacks and that kind of a range of danger for uh, Kale is going to be incredibly, incredibly dangerous for uh, Frozen... for not Frozen Fire, sorry, Ravenite. If he takes that Ryze up in the top lane up against Kale. Same thing actually against uh, a top lane Soraka. If you pick a Kale, uh, it's a fairly decent counter. You silence a Kale, she'll continue to auto attack you to death. Uh, same thing here against Frozen Fire. You blow down, blow out the cooldowns and you stop the enemy team from engaging on you, but when you have the range auto attacks here from Kale, you have the Reckoning, you also have a heal available and of course the intervention on Kale. That's not going to be a whole lot to stop her from continuing to roll down pressure onto your team. Ravenet looking to pick up uh, Caitlyn on Tomato Orange's behalf. We have about 30 seconds left in the selection, so still uh, some time to take some thought, but uh, Evelyn sneaking its way 
through the ban phase. Now, Intel did ban that out on Google last time, but are going to prioritize that. So Xerox. He takes Evelyn in the jungle up against Evelyn. Or uh, Evelyn against Elise. Excuse me. So Elise with the Spiderlings, a great duel dueling potential, but the surprise stealth from Evelyn. Now, the funny thing to think about is also consider how much vision that Google Amber had in game one. I'm not incredibly worried uh, of Achilles' presence. They're not Achilles, Xerox. I can't read tonight. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. So, uh, Evelyn. So, Evelyn with that presence up in that top, or in the jungle, with the stealth, that hidden passive stealth, not going to be too worried about that because uh, really the the impeccable amount of just vision on the enemy team is not gonna allow her really to get close <laughs> on anyone. Gotta keep an eye out for that, how Eve wants to come in onto the enemy. It'll be a really, really tall order. We'll make it sound easy. Casters always make it sound easy, but it, it's gonna be incredibly, incredibly frightening, so... uh Xerox has to be careful of the vision that the enemy team has. Super, of course, we'll be running that kill up in the top lane against Ryze, and go ahead and, as uh, we're starting to approach that spectator delay, there we go. Go ahead and pop open the summoner spells for you. So uh, again, we're gonna have completely mirrored summoner spells. We do have that uh, heal in the bottom lane as well, on the marksman as well as the mid lane. And of course, the uh, teleports in the top lane and the exhaust were both supports, and of course, the typical smite for the junglers. But uh, that's going to be like that way, that way almost all the time. So this is going to be fun. When you take a look at the lineup here from Intel, these are incredibly fragile champions. Lucian, not incredibly tanky. Morgana, not a tank. Neither is Kale, neither is Ziggs. They're just so fragile. Same thing with Evelyn. So the question is, how are they going to initiate on the enemy team? You do have the Dark Bindings coming out here for Morgana, not to mention if Intel can get the ball rolling in that bottom lane. You also have the Piercing Light Shots, from, and the of course the uh, the double auto-attack uh, passive, the, uh, the Light... I think it's Light Shots. I'm probably completely quoting that wrong. The passive available on Lucian, able to allow him to double-tap enemies. A little bit of love there. So... Kenta, Neko, and AF Cow. If they get the ball rolling enough, that's going to be a Lucian you can't stop, and he's going to continue to auto attack behind a minion line. You'll have the Dark Bindings you have to continuously dodge out from Morgana, and the presence from Evelyn, it's just going to add up a little bit more. That stealth is going to be incredibly crucial. Now, up in that top lane, we also have the intervention on Kale. It's going to be harder to kill the Intel team against any sort of AP, especially when you also have the uh, Dark Binding from AF Cow Achilles running that uh, Ziggs. Keep an eye out for those Mega Inferno bombs making a huge difference, but on the opposite side of the table, here's Yarius running Zyra, taking that away from the enemy team. Frozen Fire will be going with Evelyn, you're not <laughs> Evelyn, Elise. One more time, Kelvincible swapping onto Oriana, Tomato Orange on the long range. Caitlyn picked into the Lucian, uh, and Ravenite, of course in that top lane with Ryze. Expect him to be so massive when he manages to uh, get, of course, the Tear of the Goddess ramp up on, of course, the creep score and perhaps a couple kills with it. And that bottom lane, they have to be incredibly careful. You do have the Dark Bindings coming out here from Morgana. Maybe we could expect Yaris to plant down the, uh, literally plant down plants quickly enough to stop the Dark Binding from surprising himself or Tomato Orange. Or maybe we'll see a Zyra getting mowed down by the speed of the Dark Bindings, not to mention the Tormented Soil as well. That's going to be a huge amount of pressure in that bottom lane. It comes down to Morgana with zoning out uh, against Zyra. Who do you focus down and how do you position around them? You do have that longer auto attack range and presence from Caitlyn, but this is a bit of a classic matchup, a Lucian against Caitlyn. We'll see how it comes down to the supports. We'll see how they want to go ahead and handle this one. We did already talk about the mid lane. Uh, in game one, again, identical champions, identical sides, different teams, different players holding them this time. And as we head into loading screen, let's take a quick 
think about what happened in game one. Now, Google Amber had superior vision on the enemy. Uh, yeah, Google Amber had superior vision, stole the first dragon underneath Intel's nose as they started it, took a lot of objectives off of bad, mis ma bad major mistakes early for Zyra, and it's tough. You can't stop. <laughs> you can't stop uh, an enemy team when they see that you've made a mistake, and they're gonna go go ahead and capitalize on that. So, uh, Intel. Hopefully, they've learned from uh, what they could do better in game one and for game two. Again, comes down to stopping Frozen Fire. Don't let him set the pace of the game really early for his team and eliminate the vision on the enemy. So uh, here we go, loading up. We do have a little bit of a delay there, Calvincible trying to get back in the game with the Sown Chaos Oriana. I do wish that they have plush versions, like plush skins for every champion. Wouldn't that be just super cute? Maybe we'll see that someday. One of these days. But here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are spawned onto the rift. Intel on the blue corner playing for United Way of the Columbia Willamette. And Google Ember competing for Charity Water, the same charity that both of the A Division teams, Microsoft One and Amazon Prime, are going to be competing for uh, two weekends from now. But coming out into the rift, uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Silver Dirge. We are in game number two in a best of three series. Google Ember is up one after Superior Vision and a very frightening Jax that made a huge difference onto the enemy. Things going down, we do see that bouncing bomb coming out, and I'm sure Ziggs could f definitely hear that from earlier. I don't think that revealed any sort of vision, but uh, the pings going down looks like Google Amber not going to bother trying to continue holding the strength in that bush. And given the... Uh, we didn't see any aggressive level 1 invade, so we're not going to see it again uh, for this start, but we do see those defensive wars being placed along the river. And Pink's going down to full five-man room. They're trying to cripple this Evelyn. You gotta do that early. Might as well just set the pace of the game from the first blood really earlier. So, uh, keep, keep, uh, keep fingers crossed. We do see that recall coming down and perhaps, uh, that does look like Rise going back to recall. So we could end up with a lane swap and we actually are. And it's a wise choice considering that Ravenite on that rise does not want to have to deal with Super ALA on Kale, and it was good timing waiting for that early trinket ward being burned in that top lane before Google Amber goes ahead and invades. So Ping's going down. This is Intel. Again, no knowledge whatsoever of where the enemy team is. Their wards weren't far out enough, and uh, that's just going to be a bad spot here for Evelyn when she sees that her blue buff is completely gone, starting on her red and up in the top lane. Now Super has found out they've done a lane swap. So in that bottom lane, got to keep an eye out for Kent and Neko. Hopefully, on Lucian manages to get the ball rolling, get more of that creep advantage. And oh, as I go ahead and swap out the uh, portraits down here in the bottom. Again, guys, thank you so much for coming here to join us on Wednesday evening for the B Division Finals and Best of Three. We always like uh, seeing you guys as we wrap up Season 4. We do hope you join us again for next year. And uh, join us online for uh, May 31st at 1pm Pacific Time, I believe. We are having A Division Grand Finals for $5,000 to a charity of choice. Uh, well, charity water at any rate. It just depends on in the name of which team. 1pm uh, Pacific Time held live in the uh, Red Bull Studios down in California. Hope you guys get a chance to tune in there, but uh, again, things going down. Looks like uh, Kale's gonna try to help out her jungler. She doesn't really have much of a chance to approach her minion line. We'll take a look at how how well Tomato Orange has pressured that in Xerox and some help there. We don't see that blue buff, and uh, unfortunately, he has finally figured that out. He's trying to help out his jungler in that top lane. Stealth up in the top lane, and oh, built over Peacemaker, hitting level two. So there's the level advantage on Super. He's brought down from 100 to. 30% and just a small handful of spells from both the RC's Pedro Orange. One over one oh no, not gonna hit that that time. Now in that bottom lane now, Ravenite's also suffering from something similar, but he at least has a little bit more range over the enemy. They're gonna try to do that and uh, 
I just stick around here. Oh, Xerox can grab their <laughs> good grasping roots. Plant, and he doesn't have the presence from his fellow jungler. Now, this gives Frozen Fire a lot more liberty than Intel could ever have expected. He's now counter jungling very clearly onto the enemy side. You know where Evelyn is, and considering that she has stealth, it, Elise is going to be so much more comfortable invading the enemy. So, uh, Intel responding to the top lane, not allowing that to fall, and uh, in the bottom lane, trying to continue pressuring as best as possible. Oh, stopping Ravenite. And uh, here comes Frozen Fire down the backside. AFK taking that explosive spider lane, and here we go. Oh, the repel coming up, coming down. The exhaust being thrown down on the spider as well, just to keep her off the, their backs. AFK kind of doing that a little bit more preemptively as Ravenite approached the lane. Good reaction there. And the Super ALA is really starved up in this top lane again. Still sitting at level 2. Not a lot of presence from Evelyn in terms of uh, the bottom lane or the mid lane. But she's trying to catch up on farm and on presence and levels for the enemy. And she's doing an okay job, but it's that top lane that's a really soft tension point here for Intel. But at least the bottom lane here. Count Neko, incredibly comfortable keeping up with Caitlyn. Who's also responding by putting pressure on his top laner. That's the turret. is actually a lot more uh, soft down here in this bottom lane. Oh, good dark binding. And a couple shots out there. Rune present being thrown down. Good black shield as well. Gotta keep Kantan Neko alive. Get Lucian fed, uh, fed, farmed, positioned well. Get that ball rolling for Illusion. He's going to be such a menace to the enemy team. That's really what Intel needs right now. They need a tower. They need the pressure across the lanes. And they also need Achilles to continue being a menace here on the Convincible. Oh, oh, here comes the teleport down in that bottom lane as Ravenite went back to go and repurchase a couple things, but he's taken quite a bit of damage from Katsuneko. It's really the only one here who's taken quite a bit of damage. Did burn Summoner Heal to try to stay alive. Should be A-OK, -okay, though as uh, they continue to barrel down for this turret. Let's take a quick look at Super up in the top lane. His turret is actually still fairly healthy compared to the bottom lane as uh, that should go down. Xerox is actually not even afraid to uh, engage onto the enemy, but will die to first blood. A little bit of a cheeky play there trying to distract Ravenite and uh, give global gold for his team as uh, that is going to wrap up rather well. At the end of the day, that will be more global gold in Intel's pocket, but that is a lot of gold going to Rise. And we all know what happens to Rise when he gets farmed towards the later stages of the game. Got to be incredibly careful for that. And on the backside, good combination from Zyra as well as Caitlyn. The grasping roots into the Piltover Peacemaker. Same thing with that headshot. Oh, super. Got to be incredibly careful. Not a lot of defensive spells for him. The good lane swap coming out here in response to that. Eliminated the tower. Now turn around and look for more. As in the mid lane, both, oh, a tower shock for Tomato Orange and a really aggressive flash and flash response too. But hey, a flash for uh, two summoners on the opposite side is more than enough. Super is going to be incredibly comfortable with that. And Kenta Neko's presence as well as AF Cal. Maybe, no, they're not going to be able to stop Caitlyn and Zyra from going ahead and uh, going back to purchase as both marksmen will be returning to lane with the same items, same thing with the supports, except we do have an additional ward in Morgana's pocket. Frostfang's gonna be a little easier to pick off of Ravenite when he's uh, got to be a little bit closer than Super, who's trying to farm back up. Still behind about to double to Rice here. Kind of expected, considering the long range and the combinations from Zyra earlier. But this will be the second tower falling incredibly quickly. If Kent and Neko and Cow have something to say about that, as Achilles gets ganked in the mid lane, Frozen Fire will get a flash out of him, so good play there. No satchel charge is going to save you from an angry spider. So good play there, and a couple more taps on this turret will do it. Tomato Orange trying to remain safe and careful about it, but any sort of initiation. Oh, there's a de initiation. Or uninitiation, there we go, by uh, both these marksmen. They don't want to get too close. Pots are burning on both sides. As another burning plant dies for Zyra. Gotta keep an eye out. And they're trying to keep those trinket wards and pink wards alive. Cal looking to respond with wards of his own. They're using his sight ward to eliminate that. Oh, missing Yarius. But the grasping roots will hit. So uh, here we go. Point of contention. The ward wars 
are definitely happening here. This cow tries to ward the backside. You don't know where Elise is and clearing out that pink bush. Oh, he has been spotted out. Luckily, so cow. Oh, good grab on a frozen fire. They're going to stop a lot of the pressure. Frozen fire has to rethink. Well, how else do I want to approach this lane? They know I'm up here. So things are starting to open up as Cow and Kenta Neko eliminate one tower, have the second one on board pretty quickly, as uh, Kale is also catching up in farm now, looking a lot better. Still only 20 CS behind, but at least, uh, no, sorry, that's less, of, a little over 10 instead of 20 CS behind. So catching up, but still not in a comfortable enough spot, got to keep her uh, nice and padded, but Evelyn... When you have the top lane open, we have the mid lane comfortable. When you have the bottom lane doing its own thing, he's got to look for uh, either a gank on the enemy jungler or a gank on something else. But oh, looking for that lucky blue steel. Oh my gosh, I think he got it. Oh, wow. Frozen fire. Yeah, wow. Great play from Achilles. Throwing down the mega inferno bomb. Steal away the blue buff. Good shot by him. He doesn't. He definitely has enough. AP for that. 77. Good ratios there. Looking for, of course, that Athene's Unholy Grail. <laughs> and, oh, Calvincible, a little bit miffed about that. We'll find him on the opposite side of the river as Achilles simply tries to ward up. Xerox getting caught alone up in the top lane. Good layering of the ultimates with Xerox. Oh, so low on health. A headshot will do it, though. Tomato Orange will pay for it with his life. Kentoneko taking that kill. Here comes that Soul Shackles. Oh, Second tick almost hits, but Yaris is just out of range. A piercing light and a couple more auto attacks. There we go, a double kill for Kanta Neko. This is exactly what Intel needs. And a good play, a little bit overcommit from Google Amber as Kanta Neko puts his team on his back. And does a quite a bit amount of work up in that top lane now, pulling ahead, and Creep Score got two kills. And will be finishing up the Bloodthirster fairly shortly. Now, Super taking quite a bit of damage here from Ravenite, and there's that. Tear the Goddess Catalyst. Not able to do a whole lot when you have just a Stinger. Super ALA needs to be careful. Oh, we'll have to burn the intervention. That's going to be a fraction of a moment. Trying to ward up over the wall and get some chances to uh, recall. <laughs> have to be careful about Elise running around the corner. As, uh, she's trying to find the jump there. And as Calvincible gets stopped for a blue buff, here comes Morgana on the backside. Calvincible. Oh, got to be careful. Takes Torment Soil. No Dark Binding, though. A good zoning out here from Achilles. A super goes back to lane with the teleport, and he's so low. Frozen Fire was there, but here is Xerox again, a little bit too late to help out his team. You have to cut your losses as a jungler. Choose who you want to help and snowball. And uh, if that's going to be super ALA drowning, so be it. That's not enough uh, really itemization or tankiness or farm for a kill to make a huge difference in this game quite yet. She cannot die right now. She needs to sit back, farm, let the minion wave reach the tower, and then eliminate things, but uh, we'll see how well that all plays out later. Dragon getting started here by Intel. They should be able to take it without too much trouble. Frozen Fire is not going to be uh, close enough to steal that, but Ravenite, oh, on the backside. Here comes Mega Inferno Bomb. Ravenite's going to take the full brunt of that, but Frozen Fire repelling out. Here comes Ace in the hole. Kenta Neko's going to block that for Morgana. So still just a tickle, not a huge amount of uh, attack damage or AP coming out on both sides quite yet. We haven't even hit that 13 minute mark. We have three towers down, five kills on the table. And overall, Intel looking in much better shape from game one. Up one turret over the enemy and trying to keep things farmed up. And a good, again, a good response from the rotations here. Kenta Neko. Eliminating that top lane turret also. Ravenite's been starved for a turret, but uh, bigger, faster wave clear and additional damage out on the enemy. He's already picked up Blasting Wand even, so uh, Kale has to be careful. And when your jungler, I mean, he has the Wraith and the Wolves potentially uh, to go ahead and pick up. So keep things warded, go ahead and take uh, jungle creeps. And uh, we could be seeing Super coming back into this game as long as Intel doesn't miss focus where they are going to continue applying pressure. If they continue applying pressure where Kale is, they're going to forget their advantages on the other sides of the map and Google Amber is just waiting for the enemy to make a mistake. We saw that in game one, the moment Intel makes a major decisional mistake, they're gonna get jumped on 
by Google Amber because they're waiting for it. Ping's going down onto Kale. She's been seen. Not up in her lane, so probably just waiting for Rice to come back down, but she needs to go ahead and farm up, trying to cone for those raids now. A Wraith can't buy herself. There we go. Go ahead and grab that nice and juicy farm for Kale. Gotta grab that Nash's Tooth quickly. Cow and Xerox standing on a ward in that bottom bush. Uh, but Xerox, at least, isn't visible quite yet, so uh, Tomato Orange, gotta be careful with the rest of his buddies there. Oh! Try to take pot shots and get that uh, lane ganking going. But good dodges out from this lane. Yaris and Tomato Orange, I'm sure they can smell something coming their way shortly. They haven't seen Evelyn in a while, and Ping's going down. I guess they know that uh, the wards have been planted down. Xerox trying to clear out a lot of vision. Now as a Rod of Ages gets finished on to Rise, he is down here in that bottom lane. Gotta be careful for that. Here comes the Stranglethorns on the backside and the culling for good measure, but Cow is still in a lot of trouble. Here comes the Soul Shackles. Not enough, not even needing the Ace in the hole to finish up that kill. That's gonna be Ravenite simply with the crowd control dishing out enough damage to stop Morgana. So the swap losing one tower. Losing a second one, and of course the top lane outer turrets. Ravenite has to go back and recall as Kale continues to push down on that top lane, but by the time Ryze goes back and recalls, Kale's gonna be at the front gates of that. Oh, turret! Oh, Yarius! Burning away the summoner heal, keeping him alive, but Frozen Fire, perfect timing. Gotta keep Xerox and if Cow and uh, Kenta Neko. Not too greedy for Yarius, only 400 health left. And the presence from Elise is enough to make them stop, but uh, here comes Evelyn for more. Oh, I'm not gonna catch out Caitlyn. Caitlyn's a little bit more, more wary of that. He doesn't want to get caught out alone. As a marksman, that's certainly not where you want to be. Kanta Neko, though, does have a partner with him almost at all times. Good farming, trying to stay ahead here of Caitlyn, because that's what they need. Now across the board, it's much closer this match than it was last. That was a difference of 30 to 50 creeps almost the entire game but now I mean Intel's keeping up they are dead even in gold and it comes down to the kills really and of one turret and one dragon in favor of Intel Google Amber trying to pop the defenses here and uh, unfortunately the pressure from Intel has been too much. Here comes a satchel charge on the corner for Achilles trying to get away from here. Great placement. Clearly a lot more comfortable here on Ziggs than he was on Oriana, but Calvincible. Great placement forcing Ziggs to get a little bit too close to the top side of the river and get ganked there by Elise. And that is uh, not comfortable, not comfortable, but at least he doesn't have to burn flash. So there we go. Good placements there. Want to see Frozen Fire again? He has a pretty good presence on the enemy team and tried to counter jungle a couple times earlier, but oh, Achilles looking a little bit too greedy and will get caught out of position, but no, the flash out from the... another missed Shockwave, but Xerox in the corner. Oh, that is not a good spot. A little bit too far in range for the Ace in the Hole, and the Stranglethorns will eliminate a very fragile Evelyn. So again, that's another point of contention that Intel can't really expect. That's, again, a misplay of five versus two situation and they stuck around and didn't respond to it fast enough now in the 3v5 defense things are not looking good they're too fragile and the enemy team is a lot more tanky as a ravenite's not afraid to take out quite a bit of damage here comes a culling from around the corner oh ravenite will survive with a hundred health left to him tomato orange is also able to survive up in the corner blue buff caitlin always a uh, fun options yep and uh We'll see how Tomato Orange wants to go ahead and make use of that blue buff and the additional openings left now that uh, the inner the inner turret in that mid lane is now exposed. Google Amber still has a lot of mid map control given that their tower in mid is still up. And as the dragon comes online, a lot of options here for Intel. If they take out this dragon and a couple members of the enemy team, they could also take the tower with it. That middle outer turret with them, so uh, I could swing things in their favor, but again, it comes down to don't get too greedy, don't initiate first, and if you do initiate, simply catch up a member of the enemy team, they're too fragile. 1500 
health is the maximum here, and that's on Kale. So I gotta be careful not to get caught out and not take too much damage from the enemy. As uh, they're dancing around for Baron, you have to be incredibly careful. You have Oriana and Elise on the backside. The Repel Shockwave could end up being completely devastating for the grouping up that Intel's doing right now. Tomato Orange on the backside. We have uh, Strangle Thorns coming off of cooldown soon. Maybe that would be enough to split apart the enemy. Oh, trying to be seen on the backside. Now clearing out the pink hordes. Good ousting out by Google Amber. They have the tankiness. They have the crowd control. So Intel does have to back out from this one. And stopping Ravenite, who all game long, game one, and for game two, managing to uh, continue to farm despite, you know, waiting around for objectives. And oh, good catch out in the Zyra, but again, a little bit stressful point as uh, Intel tries to knock on the doors of that turret, but they can't overstay their welcome, and they really shouldn't. Do you have Zyra backing out though? Oh, Kenta Neko out in the front of his team. Ravenite in the backside. Here comes the culling full brunt of it onto Tomato Orange. But the Summoner Heal is going to keep everyone alive. We do have Flash currently down on Achilles and just the Summoner Heal on Tomato Orange. Two Flashes down on Yarius and Ravenite. That could end up being difficult, but Ravenite's got over 2k health over the enemy right now. Maximum again. Maximum is 1500. 1500 to 1600 here on Kale. Not a huge amount of a uh, defense pool on Intel as uh, Google Amber tries to stop them. Good wave clear. Uh, of course, <laughs> tough to stop that when you have an Oriana arise and a Caitlyn at that long range. Rosenfire turning around. He's completely visible to the enemy. We have to see how uh, how Google Amber wants to initiate onto Intel, but they're being really careful again. They uh, Intel knows. They can't be the ones to initiate, because if they do that, they're not tanky enough to survive a dive underneath the turret. You do have the intervention on Kale as well. Perhaps we could be seeing uh, Google Amber putting enough pressure down for uh, forcing the intervention to go on cooldown, and then perhaps the next fight. Because there's nothing more nasty than starting a team fight and uh, seeing that bright golden ball surrounding your... Uh, your target, keeping them nice and healthy. Again, clearing out vision. The vision wars, I'm telling you. Maybe not as intense as in game one, but certainly a point of contention here. Dragon's still online and on everyone's minds. In that mid lane. They're just waiting for this. We do have the teleport available for Super and Ravenite, and Ravenite's going to continue pushing that out. There, perhaps. I mean, Super could. Definitely go ahead and look around for another lane, but the intervention is just so valuable that he hasn't really been gutsy enough to go ahead and leave the siege. Blue buff getting picked up by Calvincible, and really the the split off as Ziggs goes back to buy and Evelyn goes back to her own jungle. That's Intel loosening up on the pressure, then Katineko left out alone. Looks like they'll be forced to back away from this one. They can't wait around for too long, and I guess they kind of realize, you know, this isn't really going anywhere, but it's just their approach wasn't good enough. It could have gone somewhere. They totally could have. But uh, easing up on the pressure just a little bit, allowing Kale to go back and farm. Maybe we could be seeing her presence up in that top lane and teleport in later. The moment that Intel gets engaged on, back up a little bit, let Kale come back, use an intervention to save a teammate. A teleport fast enough is kind of the key uh, key thing if there's going to be a fight around Dragon. But that's now completely available. Kale going back up to the top lane. There we go. But the rest of his team is scattered. Lucian's at base. We have Morgana and Ziggs being the only ones to contest this Dragon. He gets a full four, almost five, as Elise comes around the backside. Mega Inferno Bomb's not going to catch out anyone. And here comes that teleport to the top lane. So at the end of the day, that's just Intel moving too slowly again. Mistakes can be made by moving too quickly, getting too greedy for positioning, for kills, for objectives. But in Intel's case this time, that was not moving fast enough. That careful balance for these team-based games, it's uh, not easy. Google Amber clearly uh, have things in stride. And being able to burn teleport to keep Kale away up in that top lane, Kale does not want to fight Rise up there, so that's going to be a dragon, and uh, no loss of a turret in response by Intel. 
We could end up seeing a corridor fight as uh, Kale and Morgana could end up catching Elise. But you have a uh, Tomato Orange on the backside. Oh, Super Alien is going to start in on this. Culling on the backside of Ryzen. Here comes a. a Oh, wow, Soul Shackles completely vertical. Oh, good shock, but Kataneko is completely vulnerable on the backside. Here comes Aokao, no one to block the ace in the hole as Russellfire takes him down before falling himself. Now Achilles on the run from the enemy, three of his teammates down. Kale also running out in front of him, but at, oh, a failed flash over the wall. Here comes that summoner heal, keeping Tomato Orange and Convincible alive. So here's that ace as Yarius cuts off Kale. So a good fight. For Google Amber, overall, and again, Intel, they can't fight in those corridors and they can't fight alone. Kenta Neko, you have to keep him alive, don't let him be completely uncovered, but again, the team is just so squishy, and there's not a tank for Intel that when you have the onslaught of damage coming out here from Google Amber, nobody on Intel is able to stop that. So as uh, Intel is now down one turret, and even in Dragons, we'll see how they want to go ahead and respond here to Google Amber. Good placement of the hate spikes. Xerox will be stealing that uh, big wraith away from uh, Caitlyn. Forced to back out. So they're still throwing themselves here at this middle outer turret. Um, and Captain Neko is still out in the front by himself without his teammates, really. There's nobody to be a forerunner or a peeler for Lucian. That's the important thing, you're Kenta Neko, you can't let him fall. And the uh, the option to just out-damage the enemy team, the the options for the, doing that are running slim. You have a Ryze, who's 3 0 and 5, 209 CS, and hasn't died. You have Oriana, who's already finished the Rabidon's death cap with 7 assists, and is looking for more AP in the form of the Blasting Wand. You have Caitlyn, who's up one item, over your own marksman, not a lot of options now. The gold has continued to balloon. The ace definitely helped. The dragon, as well as uh, taking out an additional two turrets onto the enemy, going to be a lot more comfortable. A lot of padded gold here. Seven thousand ahead for Google Amber. Now looking for the Spectre's Cowl and the Glacial Shroud. Here's a rise that's able to build nothing but mana. And that's not going to be very easy to stop here on Intel's side. Now, Intel did a pretty good job from that early lane swap. I mean, that was Google Amber on the backside, so what happened there? Again, not reacting fast enough, and after kind of establishing early game pace, it's like, well, now what? And that's kind of the huge separation between these two teams now. It's the... Intel's not able to close out the game because they can't. They're not really sure what they're looking for, and they don't have enough vision, or they don't have enough uh, confidence in being able to fight out things. They're staying too long for objectives instead of thinking, you know, maybe the best objective is one that's flexible, one that changes along with them. So teleport in the backside. Here comes Kale, the culling coming out, but not hitting anything. A complete whiff super on the backside. Here comes the Strangle Thorns on a four members, but only hitting three. A double shockwave, but Ravenite in the front will be able to completely nuke down Ziggs on the backside. AFCAL's trying to stop Frozen Fire, but that is only one champion trying to peel for the team. Kataneko survives, but a triple kill for Ryze. He's now 6-0-5, ladies and gentlemen, and going to continue to be stronger. And then we got a beeline for Baron at the 27 minute mark for Google Amber. Again, good plays here, waiting for the enemy to make a mistake and then capitalizing on it, being incredibly patient about that despite their failed uh, initial uh, lane swap at the beginning of the game. So that's going to be a very quick dragon, because by the time the enemy team responds, they're not going to be in a good place for that. Now 11,000 gold ahead, 28 minutes. This game is moving far more, <laughs> far faster than the first one. And I really am not sure what Intel could look for at this point. Again, comes down to vision, and as Google Amber retreats for anything, or they engage on anything, or they got their bases covered for that Baron anyway, they went ahead and did it, and they didn't need to refresh very many wards on their way out. Now, a lot of, say, other competitive collegiate teams, LCS teams, challenger teams, you notice wherever the team has been or is planning on being, there have been a trail of wards 
Now, Google Amber did that in game one. There have been a trail of wards leading to the line of, they kind of drew a line with their wards saying, this is the control we have across the map. They don't need that for this game. They're a lot more comfortable with their opponents. Not to mention, they are not looking for objectives at this point. They've got enough uh, control and power across team fights that uh, they're just watching for the enemy team, grouping up and then simply defending, but their defense has been so strong that it turns into completely nuking out and killing the enemy team. We do have a lot of defensive wards being placed down by the blue team. You can see all the entrances and exits of the jungle of the mid lane covered here for intel. They don't want to get caught out of position and that is good for them. But uh, when you have Google Intel, who's now a hold almost 3,000 ahead of their opponents, they are way too strong for them to stop. We don't have any defensive items except for the Aegis of the Legion there on Morgana. But she's got way too many other targets to focus down. Uh, okay, so maybe you can argue that the Black Shield and the Intervention are going to make a difference. But really, then what? Uh, you're teammates are still going to get nuked down. They're, they don't have enough of a defense pool or enough peel. The only crowd control is really Morgana. Uh, and that's really just the Dark Binding Soul Shackles. The enemy team is just so mobile and there have only been one or two making a beeline for the backline. You don't have a really massive Soul Shackles. So Cow's running about out of options. Xerox on this Evelyn wasn't able to apply enough pressure through the mid game that they kind of lost uh, intel lost their advantage and the itemization is completely starved because they don't have the gold to stop google amber now pressing in the more pings down stealing away the enemy jungle camps and uh, unfortunately intel can't do anything about that so intel trying to bunker down and play more defensively and they need to do that right now don't let kenton go wander around uh as the vanguard for himself they're trying to defend that turret. So we need... What do we need at this point? We need to stop Raven, <laughs> Raven Knight from terrorizing the enemy team, but he's got enough crowd control by himself and enough damage that he's not really frightened of that. You need to stop getting cut out by the Stranglethorns. Yaris has hit at least one, maybe two members of the enemy. Oh, Ultimate's getting burned and simply clear out the wave. And a lot of resources simply to try to delay the inevitable, but Google Amber wants this turret. It's less than half health remaining. And Frozen Fire on the opposite side trying to continue to starve out the enemy for vision. Repels on the back side and actually Rise is going to continue sitting on the back. Uh, cleanup crew. We could end up with him pinching Intel. Now last time, as they're on the red side, they completely seated this tower and played defensively and setting, instead of allowing the enemy team to chase them down. There we go, they're going to continue back up underneath their own inhibitor turret. This could be the last stand of defense. But uh, again, gotta be careful for the Stranglethorns. There's so much AoE between both Orianna and Yarius that's uh, not going to be easy to stop when you have the Repel as well as the uh, Rune present from Rise. But good wave clear from Intel. They're trying to continue to stop Google Amber. But they have options. The mid lane's also available to them. They have a lot of ward coverage behind them. No other uh, things are responding, uh, respawning in terms of objectives except for perhaps the enemy team's jungle, but uh, good placement, good uh, clear by them. They realize, okay, we're not going to do a whole lot, so let's clear out that mid lane. So the, when the mid lane clears, the, bottom, the second line of the minion lines in that bottom lane will be approaching that inhibitor turret. So we do have two options for Google, we're going to continue to have two options for Google Amber to push down for an inhibitor, but uh, that's also Intel with two points to defend. Now a third as a Kale goes ahead and splits out from the rest of the team to push out that top lane. You gotta be incredibly careful for that if Kale continues to defend that top lane by herself. That's going to be a full five-man collapse as Kale overextends. That's the spot out by the ward. He's got to back up now. Should be, there we go. Able to run away safely, but the rest of his team knows it. They're all convening with Lucian picking up the rear. So that is Kale's behind, Evelyn's behind, and that is just tough on the gold purchases here. 13,000 gold behind. 
until all they can do is wait for Google Amber to make a mistake, and Amber is not letting that happen. Good placements, and they're realizing, you know, we can just jerk Intel by their noses, go ahead and group up as a full five-man team, and watch Intel respond to them accordingly. Moving across the map with the enemy team it takes two to tango, and they're certainly doing that. We need more damage out on the table. We even have a Void Staff finished on Oriana. And not a lot of, uh, still not a lot of defense on Intel. Really harsh sticking point. We have the Banshee's Veil on Rise, as well as the Frozen Heart. Uh, taking a look. We have an Elise that built Tanky. You also have a, a Banshee's Veil on Zyra, so it's going to be hard to reach them, and not to mention a Mikhail's Crucible, so any sort of crowd control, which is really only Morgana at this point, a hard crowd control on the enemy team is going to get completely nuked. We don't... Yarius doesn't have to worry about the timing of the Mikhail's Crucible, because there's only one target that could potentially be uh, completely left uh, ensnared by the enemy. We could end up having a forced Baron fight. Uh, good, another good option here for Google Amber. Enough pressure onto Intel. They should be able to do this. Paint Lord Sky, go ahead and cover your bases before going ahead and starting that. Could end up setting up a death bush too, just waiting for the enemy to jump in on them. So here we go. As Yarius joins the team, Calvincible on the backside, Ravenite taking point. Waiting for the enemy to show up. Oh, Mega Inferno Bomb in the corner burned onto Baron, so, uh, we don't know where they are, but that's going to be a huge AoE down and out for the count for Achilles, and there's no contest for this Baron. Completely free at the 36 minute mark for Google Amber. Now as Intel goes ahead, rethinks, regroups, we've got Evelyn in the, that bottom lane completely alone. We don't have enough, uh, really, farm. Canton Neko's done a pretty darn good job of trying to keep up with the enemy. He's only a thousand gold behind, and only two thousand gold behind for Ziggs, but take a look at that dismal difference between Kale and Rise, and that is the toughest thing for Intel right now. Intervention's not making a huge difference. Kale's not making a huge difference. And Kale technically should be able to uh, AoE shred with the auto attacks. Nash's Tooth already built there. Also, another option, uh, for those of you wondering, I mean, actually there's a, a rather interesting build over in Korea. Arunan's Hurricane Kale uh, has made its way into the selection, build a Nash's Tooth, build a Runon's Hurricane, and your auto attacks start to hurt for quite a bit. But here we go, here's that Siege coming up here from Google Amber. Not much of a Siege, a Super ALA has to burn that intervention on himself. Xerox out in the front. Now if Cal up in front and center, Ace in the hole also getting burned there, but you know, that's only one, two ultimates to three, and Xerox gotta be careful. Oh, Ravenite's found you! There we go, Overload's not enough, the good Dark Binding, and, oh, <laughs> unfortunately, there's a little bit of an overzealous placement here from Calvincible. Forgot to move the ball. We'll try to sh use a Shockwave on himself, <laughs> leaving Ravenite to die alone. So still no deaths, good defense, and unfortunately, a bit of a misplay. If Calvincible had managed to land the ball and the Shockwave carefully enough, that could have been Ravenite surviving. But, uh, oops. Calvincible, uh, running away quietly. We'll pretend we didn't see that, but Ravenite... I guess, you know, that's the quickest way to go back and make a purchase is to die. Maybe that's... Well, he's got a different plan, ladies and gentlemen. Six, one, and five. Rise, and uh, the rest of the team now picking up the dragon. Wow, look at the... <laughs> look at the wards there on Google Amber. Everything in the upper jungle as they try to take away that inner top turret. Good placement and uh, good vision by Google Amber Intel again, kind of starved out for anything, not... They've got nothing in their jungle, they've got nothing coming in on their lanes. Except perhaps the top, but if they go ahead and turn around for that top lane, they're going to lose what little ground they've managed to recover back as the enemy team goes ahead and recovers and uh, repurchases things, but the massive itemization difference is making... Uh, I mean, that's making a huge splash in that mid lane. That is Intel pushing the wave to the turret 
But the moment they do that, that's going to be Orianna clearing the wave so fast you can't really have a chance to get out there and blink. And actually, uh, that's going to be Orianna, now the only one without a death on her team. Now looking almost at this full six item build for Rise. We got five items built on every single person here on Google Amber. As opposed to three, maybe four core items on Intel. Definitely lagging behind way too many kills across the table on Google Amber's side. But the bright side, Kentaneko has remained alive. Has the, almost the highest creep score in the game, keeping up just shy of Orianna, and the bottom line is, you know, Kentaneko has to remain alive, but you can't defend him when the team, when you have Super burning the in intervention on himself, and Cow managed to do a good catch out there on a Ravenite, we got too zealous, but uh, again, Dark Binding, you can only really pick one target, so uh, be incredibly careful for that. also can't risk a suicide for uh, any members here on Intel. I have to be really careful for that. Don't get cut out of position. Go ahead and refresh wards. But the moment that uh, Google Amber realizes you're overextending their go ahead, they're gonna go just go ahead and, and uh, continue rolling into the base. Now 67,000 to 51,000. And that number is just gonna continue climbing higher. Now earlier, that's I think about the 18 minute mark, give or take, that was pretty much uh, dead even or within 2,000, making a huge different now, difference now. 16,000, 15 kills up, 3 towers, 2 barons, and a couple dragons. Pause the fire, not afraid to go ahead and auto attack the turret. Oh, he's been caught out by a dark binding, but the repel coming up, coming down, no really options left to run. But here comes the strangle thorns as well as the culling. Not gonna hit anyone, but here is super out in the front. Ace in the hole being burned, and again, there is the <laughs> wow intervention being burned there on Xerox trying to keep him alive. Kenta Neko takes one for Kale and this oh summer heal getting burned. Keeping everyone alive. Good trade out. The best trade out that Intel has gotten so far was just that messy engagement by Google Amber. They weren't really ready for Super ALA and actually forcing uh, or choosing to go ahead and catch out someone else. But Yarius, oh. A cow can't be too eager for a kill on the Zyra wandering away. We'll see whether or not uh, the death timers start to make a difference, but really it's not a whole lot. Oh, interesting itemization choice here for Kale. Did grab that Lich Bane pretty early on, but you know, you don't have him shredding apart the towers and Xerox actually taking the turret for the mid lane as Achilles takes the point here. Here comes a culling one more time. Good grab on a Ravenite, not going to allow him to jump on the enemy team one more time. But he's still fairly healthy, so not afraid to continue pushing down as a Xerox and Achilles limping away. So Google is still having a tough time trying to crack Intel space. Stranglethorn is coming back up online. Now what I could expect to see maybe put the Stranglethorns right underneath the inhibitor turret is one option to get back in or perhaps a repel. So Frozen Fire and uh, Revenite are tanky enough and in threatening enough that if you know they could probably tank enough damage coming up from the enemy team while you have tomato orange just hammering away at the backside he's already finished the infinity's edge uh in addition to the last whisper so uh eh, give or take there's still 15,000 ahead of the enemy team and looking incredibly comfortable now super ala with the gwinsu's rage blade now the funny thing about this item you need some time to ramp it up uh and then keep it ramped up but if you don't get the chance to live long enough to continue auto-attacking, the full effect of the stacks on this item are not going to make a huge difference. Third variant of the game respawning 43 minutes in. Google Amber making a bum rush for it, and they're not even bothering to ward their backside because they know Intel can't escape, or they're not willing to leave their base. So here we go freely. Here comes the Mega Inferno Bomb. Just checking where they are, Tomato Orange. They're life-stealing away. That's that uh, bloodthirster talking there. So tomato orange, not even a scratch left at the end of that. Now with the barrened up 
Google Amber looking to close out this game. Here comes Frozenfire up in the front with the rest of his team. We could be looking at the B Division champions here for After Hours Gaming League Season 4 as Intel tries to make one last hurrah. It does catch on the Yaris. Frozenfire up on the front side. Oh, Rappel coming in here. Here is Kale out on the front side again. Intervention being burned. And Ace in the hole. Oh, managed to thread the needle. There's a Stranglethorn right underneath the tower. Not able to stop that. That will be Elise. No, no, Evelyn. Falling there in a soul shackles right underneath. Oh, Tomato Orange has been caught out. Second tick away. A of Cow trying to eliminate him, but the no, the Bloodthirster is way too much. But here comes Kenta Neko. That's going to be more than enough to eliminate the three for three. As Iarius, oh, Mega Inferno Bomb, not quite enough. A bouncing bomb being thrown out there. No, good satchel charge preventing Ravenite from initiating. But but Iarius burning the consumable pots, trying to remain alive. Good play there. As Kenta Neko pushes out, trying to eliminate this turret here. So at the end of the day, that was a good defense from Intel. A 3 for 3. And they managed to take out one inhibitor and they... Or one turret. And they don't lose their own inhibitor turret. Good place, but there. The turtling down by Achilles. Now he's managed to grab a Void Staff of his own. Now looking for Leandres building up that haunting, guys. And a good placement there. The sacrifice made by Xerox, Cow, and Super led to a turret and nothing in the hands of Google Amber. And that's just the Arius and Ravenite now remaining with the Baron buff. And that's, I mean, that was a fight with the Baron buff, guys. A fresh Baron buff. That was a good defense here from Intel. Again, keep Kanto Neko alive. See how well he continues to scale into the late game and uh, allow Ziggs to start making a huge difference, too. We'll be looking at Azonia soon, but uh, as we have the last of those items all wrapped up and finished for everyone, we'll see what happens. There you go, getting that dragon picked up, so a little bit of a choice there by Intel deciding not to grab that, and honestly, that's okay. Uh, if they didn't take out the dragon fast enough, that would have been the remaining members of Google and we're initiating right on top of them in a corridor where Intel doesn't really have much of an escape or they can't funnel the focus of uh, Google Amber in a way that's more expected. So a four-man push down the mid lane as Rise comes on the back to join them. We could be seeing that siege on the inhibitor turret one more time. Frozen Fire is not afraid to tank this turret. Mega Inferno Bombs are used to simply clear out the wave. Again, more wave clear out from Intel. Oh, Frozen Fire getting caught underneath the turret will be now brought down under 3,000 health. Very, very tanky, Elise. The AP finishes. Actually, uh, also a Void Staff being finished here by Kale. Packing more of a punch. Not a lot of defense in terms of uh, magic resist. On, uh... Actually, no, everyone's got magic resist. Never mind. But uh, a lot more defense on the enemy team. We do see three Banshees. Another Negatron cloak getting picked up by uh, Caitlyn. We could be seeing a, a fourth one on Google Amber. Now with a 4-1 push as Rise sticks around in the top lane. It, this is a good strategy. This is a way to crack Intel. If they can send someone up to stop Ravenite, the rest of the four members of Google Amber can definitely go ahead and steal the inhibitor on their side too. I'm trying to, again... Bunker down. Now, 47 minutes in, that gold difference is still 17,000, but you know, honestly, as long as long as the game goes, the difference, the gold difference is going to be peanuts. At some point, there are no more purchases the enemy team can make, and that's they're not going to get any more frightening. Oriana is there right now. Uh, Rise is there right now. Uh, they're not going to get any scarier, and they're not going to get any weaker either, but when your team still has more room to grow and more gold, to continue to accumulate and get even stronger, we could end up seeing a long, drawn-out fight, but Intel, they can't make any mistakes if they want to go ahead and do that. And oh, that red trinket barely missing out on that ward. Oh, Achilles trying to run away from Ravenite, who did flash, trying to look in for this kill. Oh, he's getting pinched by the enemy team. Here comes the Soul Shackles. Not going to get that second trigger, though, as a good... Culling here from Kanto Neko, six kills now. Trying to continue to remain farmed and be the keystone for his team. I like the placement here, trying to get Kanto Neko with the farm. I'm getting him fed. 
He's trying to pull ahead in a, of a rise in the gold. Yes, one more, two more. Two more creep squirms. She'll hope be able to find it before Ravenhead goes ahead and respawns. He's got almost a 45 seconds left. So we could be seeing this uh, turret, but uh, there's no minion line behind them. It's going to be tough. Crack that good bouncing bomb being chucked out. As the siege begins on the other side of the board, Kenta Neko, oh, almost managed to take out this turret from 100 to nothing. Super, now incredibly low, did tank a lot of damage from the enemy simply to put a huge dent into that turret, but that's still not enough to take it down. So as a Google Amber kind of nervously sits around, you know what, let's just go ahead and buy, I don't know if they're here anymore. The enemy team goes ahead and backs up. Any other... Looking another for other major purchases. Really not a whole lot. We do have that Negatron's Cloak on Lucian. Could be looking at perhaps a, a Guardian Angel or a Banshee's Veil of his own. And honestly, a Banshee's Veil wouldn't be a bad idea considering how many skill shots there are and uh, how easy it would be for Google Amber to go ahead and initiate. Yes, Tomato Orange does have the Guardian Angel for himself, but considering you have at least two front runners for his team to be a tank, that's Rise and Elise, respectively. Uh, the Banshee's Veil uh, option for a Guardian Angel is a good choice. Nobody's going to touch Tomato Orange when you have Frozen Fire and Ravenite sitting out in front soaking up everything that uh, could potentially be thrown out at Caitlyn. Now Baron has responded to uh, the timer there. We'll come back out onto the map and we do have Intel attempting to uh, ward up for that. Not a lot of vision. We got that death bush being set up here by Google Amber 50 minutes into this game. Looking up on minute 51. I think this is... I'm losing track. Baron number three, Baron number four. Baron number four? Mm, oh, Mega Inferno Mom on the backside, but no. Good smite from Frozen Fire was just in time to stop any sort of uh, steal away by Achilles. He managed to grab the uh, the blue buff once, but not going to be able to take out this Baron. And honestly, that's the safest way to steal Baron right now. Not a lot of options left for Intel. As the entirety of Google Amber backs out, and Intel they're back to square one. They have to defend yet again. But they're having trouble closing out this game. They don't have a lot of initiations. Nobody wants to tank up the turret for too long. Last time that was Tomato Orange and that didn't go so well. But maybe a bit of a psychological battle here. They're trying to cover their bases. They're going to continue. This is a Google Amber going to continue trying to pull that gold ahead into their favor. But, you know, looking for the tower. No real massive initiations except for the Stranglethorns. You could have the Grasping Roots and Ravenite. That Ruin Prison is a limited distance, and by now Intel has learned enough that they can't stick their necks out far enough for Rise to go ahead and pluck them out of the sky. So, uh, oh, Achilles has to be careful there. And oh, more pot shots being thrown down. Yarius burning the Mikhail's Crucible. Okay, so there. All four Banshees are down. The Mikhail's Crucible is out off the table. As uh, Zyra doesn't want to get caught out under the turret. We need another catch out like that. Maybe Intel can force Google Amber to try to start something. Good use of uh, the Black Shield, eliminating more crowd control from the enemy. Oh, uh, we still have about 40, 50 ish seconds left. Oh, Tomato Orange is in the front. A good catch out, but oh, here comes the ult from Xerox that's going to be calling as well. Frozen Fire. A little bit of a tickle there from Kanto Neko, not enough. Still a massive tankiness from both Rise and Evelyn. Or uh, Elise, not Evelyn. Evelyn keeps getting grabbed out, but she's getting, starting to get kind of tanky too. We do have that Randwood Zomen, the Banshee's Veil. Looking for more of the Locket of the Iron Solari finish there on Cow. They gotta remain alive long enough to do that. Gotta use that early enough too. The burst coming out on the Intel's side or on the Google Amber side is enough that if Intel delays in using that locket, AFK is going to lose out on the padding that the shield remains of the team. If they can all group up, go ahead and use that locket. That's just going to be an, a small amount, like five, 
mm, 1500 damage-ish, approximately. The additional damage that they have to cut through to burn down the rest of Intel. But, uh, no. As, uh, Google Amber backs out, I'm not really sure what they're looking for. They don't want to get baited out. They saw last time that was a 3 for 3 trade and they lost out in the turret. They can't throw. Uh, but at this point, 54 minutes in, the only disfavor, d disservice that uh, Google Amber is really doing is to themselves. If they can't close out this game, Kenton Neko is going to continue to farm up. He has the Spectre's Cowl looking for a Banshee's Veil instead. Uh, almost a full fi a six item Lucian. Uh, we have uh, almost a full six item Ziggs as well. Needlessly Large Rod could be looking for that uh, Zonia's Hourglass. We see on the opposite side of the table. Kale is starting to get that itemization as well, and they are so incredibly far behind in global gold, but when you think about it, 54 minutes in, the difference between 91 and 72,000 gold is not a whole lot. That shows in the items there. It's not a lot. What's left are potion and elixir buys, really, on Google Amber's team. They can't get any stronger than they are now, but they can't really get any weaker either. They're a fixed point, and the longer the game continues, that fixed point isn't going to budge, whereas Intel is just going to continue to get stronger when they pick up the items. Good turtling down, good trying to draw out the game, and of course it comes down to fatigue. If Intel manages to turn around this game and we see a game three, this becomes a race against who <laughs> who on both sides is more tired than the other, who's more uh, discouraged. And honestly, if Intel does manage to take this game to a game three, Google Amber is going to be at a huge disadvantage after an hour-long game and they couldn't close it out and Intel takes it for themselves. The psychological effect for Game 3 will be massive, but we can't call anything quite yet as Intel tries to turtle down one more time. We don't have really Baron or Dragon respawning in a long time, um, but we do need a turtle coming down from Intel. Oh, Google Amber, you can do it after hours game leap. B Division Finals, game number two. Google Amber's up one. If they can take this game, they are the champions for the B Division, having reclaimed a little bit of their glory lost from last year. They're not able to compete in that A Division. Oh, we'll see what they can do this time. So here's a attempt number 47. Something <laughs> close to that by this time. The Siege down the mid turret. They don't have... This is the point where... Intel's wave clear is now big enough that it's on par with the enemy. And, oh, frozen fire on the backside, taking a lot of damage right here. Super ALA as well. The repel coming up, coming down. Oh, good use of that massive, massive shockwave. Achilles is down and out. There's no Mega Inferno Bomb. That's going to be a massive amount of damage completely left off the table. Here comes the repel. Here is the last fight of the game, perhaps, but no, no additional kills. The repel out of the way. Frozen fire is going to be alive. Oh, Kenta Neko almost getting nuked down does also have to burn the summoner heal for, for himself from earlier after that engage will be running back to base to heal up just a little bit but uh, the delay that takes as he's trying to get back to his team oh Xerox gonna get caught out of position here comes the soul shackles only on Yarius and frozen fire will again repel to safety now Kenta Neko out in the front we do have that intervention already burned by Super Alien. We don't have that available, so he's gonna get cut out of position and get nuked down. Ravenite and Kenta Neko now completely left vulnerable, so here's that delayed ace. Slowly but surely, 57 and a half minutes in, Google Amber finally manages to get into Intel's base and are looking for the Nexus. So congratulations to Google uh, Amber. We're defeating Intel, a 2-0 match in the After Hours Gaming League's B Division Finals. In a very well played session. I do want to thank all of you guys for joining me, Silver Dirge, and uh, going to head and watching these uh, past couple matches. It's always, of course, been a pleasure to be your guide and caster for Season 4. Hopefully I get to come back next year for Season 5. Uh, again, Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a company with enough interested League of Legends players, I do encourage you to sign up for After Hours Gaming League. You play for charity, and hey, there's nothing more fun than, you know, emailing HR and saying you're doing charitable work.
in the name of your company that's always a good <laughs> a good option but uh, yeah very well played here between both Google Amber and Intel congratulations to Google Amber last year's A division of uh, finalists and champions and this year's B division champions we also want to extend a huge invitation to you guys for May 31st 1 p.m. Pacific time on this channel live from the Red Bull Studios held in uh, California will be the A Division Finals. Do a go ahead and tune into that. We have the undefeated Microsoft One coming up against the equally undefeated Amazon Prime. And when you have uh, two freight trains worth of teams coming up against each other, we'll see who comes out on top. That's going to be a really fun matchup to see. Two very different teams, two very different strategies. Both teams completely undefeated throughout the entire A Division leading up until this point. So we'll see them in another couple weekends. Again, thank you guys so much for uh, coming along for the ride. Again, my name is Silver Dirge. Hopefully I get to come back for Season 5, but it's been such a pleasure to be here for Season 4, and I thank each and every one of you for all the games that you've played, and best of luck to you guys for next year. We hope to see you there. And uh, shout-outs to everyone over at After Hours Gaming League, all the staff, Malphus X, uh, another fellow co-caster of mine, and everyone, every single member that has played, every single viewer. It's been such an awesome season, but we got one more set of games that a division finals for League of Legends will be headed your way May 31st. Don't forget to tune into that. Again, thank you again, and uh, have a wonderful Wednesday evening.